answer some questions based on the interest attitude survey that we found in the back of the book on 319. The second step after the interest attitude survey is that we ask students to read a series of sentences called the sentences for initial passage selection. That's step two. And after finding the level where they made two miscues, we identified the level, the highest level that is, where they had zero miscues, zero errors. And that's the level at which we're about to begin. Okay? Now I've been using form A as an example, and the last, and the last uh, thing that we identified was uh, that this hy hypothetical child we're talking about, it's Farmer Ted here, uh, Farmer Ted has read all the way through level 5 with zero miscues. He made two miscues on level 6, so we're starting on level 5. What that means is, I'm going to go to level 5 of form A. And if you're keeping track, uh, I did tell you that there are five different forms on this. Each form has a complete set of levels, all the way from pre-primer to level 9. Okay. Form E is the exception, and Form E is specifically for high school students. So it doesn't begin down at pre-primer, it's just the upper level uh, upper levels for assessment, okay? Uh, but forms A and B are narrative, that's story passages, and forms C and D are expository or informational passages. All of them have the same format, but it's different kind of reading. Why is that valuable? Because literature and informational text don't have the same kind of features. So it's very useful for a classroom teacher to have an assessment from both A, C, and B and D. Uh, to get a full picture of a student's reading abilities, but it's not necessary that you do both of those in one setting. For your purposes, choosing one form will be enough, and as I recommended, I think you should use level A. My student is going to begin the silent reading passages on level 5, and that means that I'm going to turn in form A until I find level 5. You'll notice at the bottom of every page It'll tell you what form you're in and what level you're in. So I'm going to turn until I find Form A, Level 5, and here I am on page 50. This is what I'm going to hand to the student. It says Form A, and down at the bottom, Level 5, Narrative Passage. It's actually two pages, and I'll hand them the notebook. And what I'm going to do is follow the directions that can be found in the assessment protocols. Because while the student has those, and there's a series of them that are all for the student. There's also, just a few pages back, a set of protocols that are for you. So while the student has the passage, you have the examiner's protocols. Okay? The corresponding protocols will simply be called Form A Level 5 as well. And I'm going to turn to those. So while Form A Level 5 for the student is on page 50, Form A Level 5 for you is going to be on page 85. And here's where you'll actually find the directions as well. Okay? So I'll follow the prompt at the top because this is, as, this, is, this is there to make sure that we have some form of standardization in the way that it's administered. Part one of the silent reading of the reading passages is silent reading and the directions are as follows. It says a background statement should be read. This story is about how one group of boys feel about their athletic shoes. Read this story to find out how important special shoes are to playing sports. Read it carefully because I will ask you to tell me about it when you finish. And you'll read that statement verbatim to the student. One thing it does is give them a little bit of background. The second thing it does is establish a purpose for their reading. And that's, both of those things are very valuable to the student. And that's why this needs to be read word for word. Okay. Following that, the student should begin reading the passage, which you have handed to them. And you will have a copy of these examiner's protocols. So the first thing you're copying, interest attitude survey. The second thing you're copying, the sentences for initial passage selection. The third thing you're copying is the set of examiner's protocols that go with your student's grade levels. My suggestion to you is that if you're going to be testing a fifth grade student, you copy 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th grade examiner protocols. That's two below and two above. That's my recommendation. That way you can, con you can conduct this entire assessment 
without having to get up and down and going to a, go to a copy machine. Okay. Now, you've handed the student the passage, and they're reading silently. While they're reading silently, there is something for you to do. Okay? One of the things that you're going to be doing is looking over these questions. Because once the student is finished reading, you're going to be asking, you're going to be listening to the retelling, and then you're going to be asking any questions that they haven't answered from their retelling. So as the student reads silently, you are going to sit and read these questions and their course and their answers so that as the student retells the passage, you're familiar enough with it to, to hear whether or not they know the answers. Okay? So once the student finishes, and that's what it says here in Teacher Directions, once the student completes the silent reading, say, tell me about the story you've just read. And as the student tells you a retelling of the story, you will take the story back. They should not be looking at it while they do the retelling. And as they do the retelling, if they answer any of these questions in their retelling, for example, where did the story take place? Well, if they mention that this story takes place at school, or more specifically, the name of the school, then go ahead and put a UA, which means unaided. They answered that question without you, without you prompting them. Following their retelling, if there were any questions that didn't get marked as UA, go ahead and ask the question. If they answer correctly, put an A in the blank for aided. If they answer incorrectly, put nothing in the blank. Okay. If you're uncertain about whether or not they got the answer correct, if you're uncertain about whether they really knew the answer, it's okay to ask a simple probing question like, can you tell me more or can you explain what you mean by that? But do not ask questions that lead them to a more specific or lead them to the direct answer. We want to know what they know. We don't need to dig too deep to get to it. Okay? One of the things that you'll see on the right side of the page is that for every question, there's also a categorization of the question. Not just a categorization, but also what kind of story knowledge is required for a student to get that question. Those things will be very useful to us, indicating whether or not the student is reading strategically and whether or not the student is taking notice of basic story grammars whenever they've read the passage. Okay? Now, following this portion, we go to the second step in the reading passages, which is right down at the bottom, part two, oral reading and, an oral reading and analysis of miscues. To do this, you'll need to hand the passage back to the student. Okay? So as you hand the passage back to the student, there's also a prompt for you to read. And it's right here at the bottom of your page. It says, say, now I'd like to hear you read this story out loud. And then have the student read orally until the 100-word word sample is completed. Follow along on the miscue grid, marking any oral reading errors as appropriate. Remember to count miscues only up to the point in the story containing the oral reading and stop marker. Okay? Now, the miscue grid that they're talking about is on the very next page of your analysis. Okay? Right here. As is the 100 word marker, so that you'll know when the 100 words is up. So you'll ask the student by reading that prompt to read to you out loud. And you, they'll read all the way until they get down to this double hash mark right here. At that point, don't yell, STOP! Instead, let them finish the sentence or paragraph, if that's what it was. Say thank you, and then let them go get a Coke, or a drink of water, or take a bathroom break, or whatever, because you're going to need a moment alone to look at the grid and the different kinds of errors that were made. 